Okay, so let's see how we're gonna make this linear. We're gonna do it with a Taylor series expansion. You may recall these from Calculus 1, and at the time, if you're like me, you weren't sure why you were learning to do this, uh, but in physics at least, I can tell you exactly why you're doing it. We're doing it because it will make something linear. So what it does is you can take any function, f of x, and you can describe it, rather than using the function, like c times 1 minus e to the bx, you can describe it with an infinite series from n equals 0 to infinity. So it takes an infinite number of terms, but don't worry, um, that look like this. You take the function and you take its nth derivative, dn f dx n, right? So that's the nth derivative, and you evaluate that at some point, x equals a, okay? So we don't just do this always around the origin or around anywhere, we pick a point, and we call that a. It could be the origin, you could put a zero there. And then that is over n factorial, and that whole thing is times x minus n, oh, I'm sorry, x minus a to the n. So you might be able to tell that this is gonna make a polynomial function, okay? This thing looks very complicated, but it's just a constant, okay? It's, you take the derivative of the function, you do all this stuff, but you plug in a, a is just a number. You plug in a for x, this is just a number. This is just a number. Okay? But then this is where it becomes a polynomial. So when n equals zero, anything to the zero is one, and this whole thing is just a number, it's just a constant. But when n equals one, this is x to the one. It's got a constant in there, but it's basically x. When n equals two, it's x squared n equals three, it's x cubed, et cetera. So you're turning this function into an infinitely long polynomial, okay? Let's write the first few explicitly just to give you the idea. So how do you take the zeroth order, the zeroth derivative of a function? Well, the zeroth derivative in this case just means the function, all right? So the first term is just the function evaluated at a over zero factorial. What is zero factorial? Well, it's one. Okay, and then we have this part is x minus a to the zero, but anything to the zero is one, right? So it's really just one, all right? So the first term is just the function evaluated at a, just the constant value, what is the function at a? Second term, plus, now we're doing the n equals one term. Now we need the first order derivative, the first derivative, df dx evaluated at a. So you take your function, Take its derivative and plug in a for x. One factorial is just one. And then you say x minus a to the first power. So now you have a linear term, which is exciting. That's kind of what we're looking for. And then you could keep going. Next would be the second derivative, d2f dx2 evaluated at a. Two factorial, two times one is two. x minus a squared. Now you have an x squared term. And you could keep going, plus, and then dot, 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 and you could go on forever, okay? So now maybe you're starting to see how we can use this to make something linear, right? It looks like that. What if we could just keep those terms, okay? Let me show you what it looks like when you really do this. Here we go. So let's pull this down here, and I've plotted a crazy function for you, uh, this one here. So this function is, um, 1 minus cosine x over 1 plus x squared e to the x. This is one of my hobbies. I just make up functions, okay? So this function you can see has sort of a double hump, very complicated function. You, this would be, it's very nonlinear, clearly, and it would be a really hard differential equation if you equated it to mx double dot. It'd be very hard to solve. So what we're going to do is pick a couple points and expand and show how we can linearize this around different points. So let's look first here at x equals minus 3. So let's um, bring that um, up onto the thing. So this is the function at x equals minus 3, okay? So now let's uh, look and say hey, this will be f of x and this will be sort of the numerical value. So the first term is the function evaluated at minus 3 over 0 factorial equals 1 times x minus minus 3 to the 0, which is 1. So it's really just the evaluation of the function at minus 3. And you can see here it comes in at like point, just below point 2. Sure enough, there it is. So the zeroth order term is always just a constant, 0.19. Let's see how our approximation looks at this point. Not very good, okay? So it's basically just a constant, and you can see it's, uh, that's the zeroth order approximation.
okay, is it's really good right at that point, and it's not good anywhere else. All right? So now let's look at um, the next term. So here is n equals 1 term, df dx. Now we've taken the derivative of all this. That's a lot of work. That's a quotient. Uh, that's a product to everything. You take that whole derivative, you plug in minus 3. But again, this is always just a number. 1 factorial is 1. And now we have x minus minus 3 is x plus 3 to the 1. So now we can see this now whole thing now together is a linear. It should be a line. So let's plot it and see. And now, yes, yeah, so here's the line. This is now the approximation. And now you can see just this, this linear expression, is a very good description of this curve right here. Right? If I promised I was going to stay in this box, and you wanted to describe the motion if this were a mass on a spring, this would be just about as good as this. And this would lead to a differential equation we can solve. Right? Let's keep going and see how much improvement we get. As you add more terms, basically, you get a more detail and you get a better fit. So here, I took the second derivative of this big nasty thing. I plugged in minus 3, 2 factorial, x minus minus 3 squared. Looks like that. And if you plot it with a second order, you see, uh, watch this part right here. You get a little bit more curvature. But you can see it didn't really make much of a difference. Especially if you're just right in here, the linear part was enough. Okay? So we could have stopped at the first term to linearize it, and we would have gotten good answers. Let's look at another spot. Let's look at uh, x equals 2. Right here, so x equals 2 comes up. That's right on a very curvy part of the approximation. And let's look at the zeroth order term. That's just the function evaluated at 2 over 1 times 1, 0.1143. And yeah, sure enough, it's about 0.1143. And there's the approximation, not very good, right? It just goes through that point. Now, let's look at the linear term. And you can see now we have df dx evaluated at 2 over 1, x minus 2. There's the numbers. Plot it. And here it is. This is the line it predicts. And you can see it does describe the curve, just in a much smaller domain. Right? So if you were to stop here and call it a linearized version, you'd have to be more careful where you apply it. You have a smaller range over which to apply it. Here, we can see if we add the second term, um, we get uh, a better description. So here, the second derivative evaluated at 2 over 2 factorial x minus 2 squared. There is the second order term, and you can see now it's doing this. And you see, actually, that is a big improvement. It describes it a lot better when you have the x squared in there. But it would lead to a differential equation that would not be linear. So in physics, what we do is to linearize. We just keep this term and we keep this term. Whether or not it, it describes enough of the domain, that's something specific to each problem. But mathematically, this is what when we say we linearize something. This is what we do. Technically, we're applying a full uh, Taylor series and just cutting it off after two terms. So now we're going to show you how to do that in a real problem.